Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is a very special video. This is how to play Magic the Gathering. Before we get started, I'm going to upfront tell you that this is a series breaking down all of Magic the Gathering and its complexities. However, this video is a quick overview of how to play Magic, the basics, and how cards in general operate. If you're wanting me to talk about the stack in the first video, forget it. That's going to be its own video. However, we will cover that lightly here. So here we go. Let's get into it. If you're new to Magic the Gathering, this series will be a great tool for learning how to play. And if you're a player that dropped the game and is returning, this is also a great resource to brush up on rules, terminology, and everything else. Magic the Gathering is a collectible trading card game that you can play with one to even up to five players. You can play on paper at your local game store, your kitchen table, and even online with hundreds of thousands of cards to choose from, lots of formats to work within, and millions of interactions to build a deck around. If you're totally new to Magic and wanted to get started, local game stores and, if local game stores aren't near you, big box stores like Walmart and Target offer challenger decks to get you started. These are 75 card boxes that contain a semi-competitive start to Magic's most popular format, Standard. This is also the format in most local game stores play on Friday Night Magic. We'll get into formats in a later video, but for now all this is going to do is get you started with cards in hand with the ability to teach yourself how to play, with a competitive enough deck to take to your first Friday Night Magic event. Now many of you have already probably bought some cards and even a Planeswalker deck. If you're building from an online list, awesome, you're being proactive and doing what several players and pros do right now. Magic is all about collecting and trading cards as much as it is about playing them. Okay, how to play. The goal of Magic is to reduce your opponent's life points down to zero. This can be done in a variety of ways. One way is simply attacking with creatures against your opponent directly, another way is burning your opponent with direct burn spells. There are even cards that let you win the game if you do a specific thing, regardless of the amount of life an opponent has. Cards like this card, Approach of the Second Sun, which states that if you cast this card or another copy of this card twice, you win the game. Another way, make your opponent unable to draw cards from their deck by putting cards from the top of their deck into the graveyard. There are so many ways to win a game of magic, but of course, creature attacks are the most common. Before we get into playing the game though, let's go over the battlefield, graveyard, and other spots where things go on the table. Magic itself doesn't have a mandatory place where cards sit on the table, but decks being put to the top right and the graveyard just below that is fairly normal. Next, if you lay a land, those go on the same line as the graveyard. Older players used to play cards with lands in the front of their creatures, but this is confusing and can lead to hiding information slash cheating. Let's not do that. Creatures go on the same line as the deck, and enchantments or any other permanents like artifacts go on the same line where land is. Now, of course, this is all opinion and conjecture, but that's how I sort my battlefield. I just like to make sure my opponent knows where everything is at all times. But that pretty much covers the battlefield. Let's move on to playing magic itself. To get started playing, you and your opponent shuffle each other's decks, then roll some dice or flip a coin. If you win the coin toss, you can decide whether or not you go first. If you go first, you do not get to draw a card. That's the drawback of going first, but it's not much of a drawback, honestly. Every turn after this, though, you draw a card. And make sure to draw a card. I know this sounds simple, but when you're thinking of a play a turn ahead, you might miss a draw step. This is a beginner's mistake, and if you're running into this habit, put a coin or dice on your deck to remind you that you need to draw. After turn order is decided, draw seven cards. The ideal hand will be talked about in a future video. But for for now, look at how many lands are in your hand. Three lands to the other four cards is usually the ideal hand. Two lands means you need to draw a land soon, and four lands means the other cards in your hand better be good. Any further in either direction and it's a mulligan most of the time. A mulligan means you put those cards back into your deck, reshuffle, and draw six cards. You can mulligan as many times as you want, but each time you draw one less card. Never mulligan before four or five if you can help it. If you did mulligan and you do like your hand, you keep it. You then get to look at the top card of your library. This is scrying for one, an ability usually limited to a card, but at the beginning of the game, if you did a mulligan, you get to look at the top card of your deck and decide whether or not it stays there or goes to the bottom of your deck. Okay, you've drawn your cards, the turn has started. You're first, what do you do? The first card you need to play is a land. Mana is how you summon creatures and cast spells. You can't do anything without mana in magic. And the primary source of your power comes from drawing one of these five elements. You're allowed to play one land every turn and those go towards helping you cast increasingly more expensive spells. They also stay on the field for the rest of the game unless other cards dictate otherwise. They're known as permanents. Each spell in your deck comes with a cast cost. For instance, this creature is two white mana and one white mana for any color, making it three mana overall. This spell is two green mana and three of any color. The key to magic is managing how much mana you're able to play and use in a given turn and how effective your deck is at quote curving out, meaning every turn you're using the exact amount of mana you need to use to win. The type of spell you're casting is also labeled here, the name here, and what the card does is here. Some cards stay on the battlefield after you're casting them. These are known as non-land permanents. This could be a creature, an artifact, an enchantment, and even a planeswalker. Other spells that aren't on land permanents have an ability or an effect that resolve and go to the graveyard. These are called instant and sorceries. Sorceries can only be played during your turn and only during your main phases after you've drawn a card before and after combat. An instant can be played at any time, even during your opponent's turn. So how do you cast a spell? You have the mana on the battlefield. How do you put this card into play? Well, you tap mana like this, turning it 90 degrees clockwise. This signifies to you and your opponent that you're pulling from that particular mana 
source. Some players like to cast a spell, then tap mana after the fact. This is an incorrect order and may in fact confuse an opponent. Always tap mana first, then play your card. The mana you've used does not untap until your next turn before your draw step. This is known as upkeep, meaning that you're tapping any creatures, artifacts, and lands that were tapped the turn prior. So here's a breakdown of a turn. Upkeep where you untap your lands and other creatures and permanents that were tapped. Draw step, where you draw a card. Main phase one, combat phase, main phase two, and end step, where you remove any damage from cards if they survive the turn. Then your opponent's turn begins. There are two main phases in your turn where you get to play the majority of your spells. These are main phase one before combat and main phase two after combat. You can do anything you want in either phase, like cast a creature in main phase one, then lay a land in main phase two. You can do stuff in any order you like. There's of course an order of efficiency, and that's another video. But for now, this is the basics of a turn. For example, you begin your turn, draw a card, then in main phase one, you lay a land and want to cast a spell. Your creature is one white mana and one mana of any color. You tap the required mana and bring out your creature onto the battlefield. Creatures entering the battlefield do not get to attack the turn they're summoned. This is called summoning sickness, unless a card or a creature says otherwise, of course. You're out of mana, so you can't do anything else. You pass the turn because it's the only creature you have and you can't attack. And that's your turn. Easy, right? Now let's talk combat. The goal of magic is to reduce your opponent's life points down to zero. And to do so, you need to hit your opponent directly. To declare attacks, just like mana, you tap your creatures 90 degrees clockwise to show you and your opponent that these are the creatures you're attacking with. Keep in mind that creatures that are tapped cannot block on your opponent's turn, and this is where the strategy of the game really comes to fruition. Once your attacks have been made, your opponent then gets to choose how to block. They can gang up on one creature or block creatures one at a time. Damage then happens all at once. They can even choose not to block, meaning that you can hit your opponent directly for the turn. Sweet. Shown here is the creature's power. Creatures deal damage equal to their base power during combat, and this is their toughness. If a creature takes that much damage or more, the creature dies and is sent to the graveyard. After combat, creatures retain their damage if they survived combat until the end step, healing them at the start of the next player's turn. And that's basically it, with exception to instance. Let's get into a simple example like this, removal and a combat trick. You're attacking in with a creature. Your opponent has a creature on their side of the field that is able to kill your creature, but would also die in the process. They choose to block to save their life points. Since you don't want your creature to die, you cast a burn spell like lightning strike here to make sure that their creature dies before combat is dealt to each other. In response to your removal spell, they play Blossoming Defense, a card that strengthens their own creature and gives it hexproof, an ability that means your spells can't target that creature. Your spell fizzles and their creature destroys yours. Ouch. Like many cards in Magic, there are ways to get around all other cards by bending the rules of the game to suit your needs. The stack is a way to protect a creature, counter a spell, and prevent damage if an opponent is casting something you do not like. The stack means that if you cast a spell and your opponent responds with that spell, the spell last cast resolves first. Then your spell or ability is countered. The stack requires its own video and deep dive, and I'll definitely do that soon, but I did want to briefly touch on it here. But that is a basic overview of how to play Magic the Gathering. Once you get your opponent's life points to zero, you win. Same goes for your opponent, so be vigilant and prepared for a fight. There are tons of cards to go through with unique abilities on each one. Each card may bend or even break a rule previously set up in this video, so make sure to read each card carefully. If there's a keyword that doesn't have an explanation beside it, however, you can go to gatherer.wizards.com to learn more about that particular card, what the keyword means, and how it affects the game. But that's basically it, a general overview. I'll be making videos going into more depth on mana curve, lands in a deck, the stack, and so much more in the near future. But for now, I highly encourage you to go to your local game store or online and grind some matches to get more familiar with how a turn works and what you can do on your opponent's turn. For now, thank you for watching this video. I truly do hope it was of some use to you. And if you liked the video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this and so much in the near future. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.